Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Mr. Merrigan's Moments in History. I am your host, Mr. Merrigan. Today, we're going to get into this furthering idea of manifest destiny. And the image that we're looking at is a very iconic one when it comes to U.S. history. It is the Alamo in San Antonio. And the Alamo certainly represents this important part of manifest destiny that be, continues west. And we'll get more into the Mexican-American War a little bit later, but it's going to add to what we talked about last time here with the Oregon Territory. We're going to be talking about Texas independence today, and the Alamo is a really great representation of this. We'll talk about how it becomes a rallying cry in the Texas War for Independence and why it is an important moment in U.S. history. So as always, let's start with our learning objective or our main idea is we're going to be able to identify the people that are coming from the United States, but also from Mexico that are settling in this area. So certainly what we're going to see is we're going to see this clash of cultures. And we're going to talk about what those cultures are and how the U.S. desiring more of an independent role for Texas is going to eventually lead to war over this territory. So when it comes to this clash, kind of have two big groups. Most of the people who are living in Texas were known as Tejanos and Empresarios. So Tejanos, these are Mexicans who claimed Texas as their home and seek a little bit more of the independence from the major areas of Mexico at this time. And remember, Mexico recently gained its independence from Spain. And before that independence, you had a group called empresarios, who were people who were encouraged by the Spanish government at the time to go and settle into Texas, which are also going to have Americans wanting to make their way as they push further west into Texas. And so in 1821, you're going to have an American by the name of Stephen F. Austin. And again, you're going to hear some namesakes. Austin is one of them for uh, places in Texas today. So in 1821, uh, Stephen Austin makes this agreement with the newly independent Mexican government to try to establish a colony in Texas for Americans to go and live in. And one of the things that is an area of contention between the Americans that want to go and live there and the Mexican government is this issue of slavery, because slavery was illegal in Mexico, but the Americans who are coming into Texas want to be able to have slaves. And originally, as part of this agreement, they're going to allow some of it, but you're going to see that eventually Mexico wants partially that land to remain a part of Mexico and also doesn't want the influence of slavery. So you're going to see some tension building already over this idea. And so those empresarios largely come, and again, this is from the United States, um, are coming as a part of this agreement between Texas, between Mexico and originally of Spain in the U.S. and then Mexico in the U.S. So in 1830, the Mexican government issues a decree, which is an order given by one in authority, which in this case would be the president, aka the dictator of Mexico at the time. We'll get into who Mr. Um, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana is. Um, but it's going to prevent Americans from settling in Texas and a discouraging trade between the U.S. and uh, Texas. And again, slavery is partially one of those issues um, that is at the core of this decree. So Austin tries to convince the president of Mexico, which is, again, more of a military dictator at this point, General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, to remove the ban on American immigrants. Remember, these are people who were exiting leaving the United States to go and live in this area. In fact, he wants to go as far as making Texas an independent state of Mexico, still under the authority of the Mexican government, but would allow itself to be more autonomous, rule itself. And so this is kind of where you're going to see, again, a lot of those tensions building. So the other main idea we have for today is now that we know the groups that are there, now that we know why there's tension, can we explain, and we are going to be able to by the end of today, to explain how Texans fought for their independence from Mexico? And here again is where we'll get to 
uh, the very famous battle and image in American history, which would be the Alamo. Texans are going to organize, they're going to set up a revolt against Santa Ana in 1835. So they're coming together, and you even have people from the frontier, people, famous people like Davy Crockett, who get lured into this. And Davy Crockett at the time was pretty much a celebrity, known as the king of the frontier. Uh, he's going to make his way down to Texas as a way to reinforce this idea of a more independent Texas. And so Santa Ana is going to march north into Texas, into the city of San Antonio, where he is going to be defeat, where he is going to defeat the rebellious Texans at the Alm again. Uh, the Texas War of Independence occurs between 1835 and 1836. It's a relatively short war in U.S. history, um, but certainly you're looking at uh, a major defeat early on for the Texans. And everybody who's uh, at the Alamo is going to be eventually killed, including Davy Crockett. Um, the link that I'll be sharing with students in class, you guys can certainly check out. It's a short link or a short clip from the series, America, the Story of Us, about the Alamo. Search for it on YouTube, you'll be easily be able to find it. But it'll give you a little bit more background on some of that tension and then briefly go over the events. So in this struggle, Texan leaders, um, much like we saw earlier in US history, are they're gonna declare their independence from Mexico, right? They're gonna do this on March 2nd, 1836. However, this is by no means Texas being fully independent. Just like July 4th, 1776, the United States didn't become an independent country. They still needed to win the war. And so just like we saw there, Americans in 1776 declare their independence from Great Britain, but they're also needing a commander in chief who they, at that point in history, they already had, George Washington. Now they, in Texas, 1836, they're gonna name Sam Houston. Again, if you're following along with the namesakes for Texas, Houston is going to be an important part of this. He's going to become the commander in chief. So, in other words, he's the one who controls all the forces that are fighting in Texas at this point. And this is going to be a really important role, and his leadership is going to be very fundamental to the independence of Texas. Okay, so he becomes commander in chief. You can see in here, Houston wants to prevent Mexicans from overrunning any of the other forts, and so he's going to order the troops at Gilead, or excuse me, Goliad to abandon their position. They don't think they can hold it. They want to come back and kind of regroup. As they are retreating, however, they come face to face with Mexican troops. And after a very fierce fight, Santa Ana's orders are that all the Texans who survived the battle are now going to be executed. And his actions outraged Texans. And it becomes a rallying cry and becomes known as the Goliad Massacre. So you've got the Goliad Massacre and the Alamo now. Remember the Alamo would be a big important uh, charge, but also this new massacre, Galia, it's also a rallying cry for Texans. It gave them extra motivation for independence. So again, the Galia massacre and certainly the defeat at the Alamo provide some of that extra juice for the Texans. So after a major defeat at the Battle of San Jacinto, Santa Ana actually gets captured, and this is pretty much where things are over for Mexico and Texas. Um, he's going to sign a treaty that recognizes Texas independence, and Texas is actually going to become its own country. But again, the Battle of San Jacinto is kind of the last pivotal point in this war. So Sam Houston, he's going to be elected president of the New Republic, Yes, Texas used to be an independent country. It used to be called the Lone Star Republic. And so when you hear people talk about Texas wanting to become its own independent country, they're actually talking about wanting it to go back to where it was in 1836. And so starting um, with Sam Houston, you're going to see that there's a push now. Let's bring Texas into the U.S. But this isn't going to happen. So what they're asking for is an annex. Okay, That's an, ad, a, an addition of territory to one's own territory. In this case, we're adding Texas to the United States. But here's the thing. They don't become a state until 1845. So you might be asking yourself, why did this take so long? It took almost a decade, you know, eight, nine years. 
We've been talking about this balance between free states and slave states. And bringing in Texas would bring in a slave state. We're trying to keep this balance. We saw it with the Missouri Compromise, and we're going to keep running into this issue of do we just keep things balanced where everything's 50 50? And eventually we're going to see a little bit later on in US history, they're going to abandon that idea and try to let the people decide this idea of popular sovereignty. People are going to vote. But we'll see, like in places like Kansas, why that's not going to work. That is going to conclude uh, this section, ladies and gentlemen. So we've talked about the Oregon Territory. We've also talked now about the addition of Texas. So we're going to see later in our next unit how much of the Southwest later becomes a part of the United States and the Mexican-American War. So that's going to conclude this episode of Mr. Merrigan's Moments in History. Those of you who are joining us just to learn, thank you so much for coming along with the ride. I hope that we're adding a little bit to your understanding of U.S. history. Those who are my students, thanks for checking this out. Please ask me any questions you have. Hopefully you've been following along with the guided notes. Um, thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next time.